Hey there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny and unique homes. In today's video, we're gonna check out a tiny house that brings stealth camping to a new level. Neil's gonna take us through his cargo trailer turned tiny home, which he lives in full time with his girlfriend as he travels the country working as a travel nurse. It's pretty brilliant when you think about it. He doesn't have to pack up all of his things and move to a new location multiple times a year. Instead, he just packs up his home and brings it with him. If you like these kind of videos, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new tour. But right now, let's take a look at Neil's cargo trailer conversion. Hey, I'm Neil, and I want to welcome you to my home on wheels. Since I was young, I saw school buses converted into houses and that kind of thing. It seemed like a very free way to exist. Some of the biggest hurdles that I've had to deal with in life, the first was drug addiction. After I got sober, I got a brain tumor, and that was another really large hurdle. It taught me to value the time that I have, and it just really gave me a new perspective on life. The only commodity that we have that's limited is time. I'm not gonna limit myself in any way if I can avoid it. So I'm a nurse by trade. When I initially started traveling, I would go and rent an apartment for the duration of our contract wherever we were. I was like, this would be so much easier if we just had our house with us. Start it and drive away instead of having to pack everything up in a U-Haul. This is actually the fourth build that I've done. The third one was in the same shell and I just built the interior out differently. My girlfriend said that she wanted to go too, so I was like, well, I need to revamp before we head across the country. This build out was probably two months. I've been in this rig with this layout on the interior for probably eight months. I'd say with all of the electrical and the initial trailer purchase and all the solar panels, total cost was about $20,000. This is the outside of the rig, 30, 32 feet long, right in that neighborhood. It's a seven by 14 trailer. I really like the look. I feel like it's more leaning towards the stealth rig. It looks like a work trailer. Total weight at this point, I think the last time I checked it, it was about 16,000 pounds. So the truck I've had for about two years. I'm pulling with a 2006 F-250 with a 6.0 in it. I've got eight total panels on the roof of the truck four slide out, and then eight on the trailer, four also slide out. That feeds to two 40 amp charge controllers, 21.6 kilowatt hours, which seemed to be enough storage for me so far. So this is kind of like the front door area, and the way the panels slide out, it kind of gives you like an awning for if it's raining or something while you're unlocking the door. We did 360 LED floods and 360 cameras. Pretty much all your standard kitchen appliances. We've got air fryer, coffee, espresso, have a microwave, little microwave up in that cabinet. And then ice maker in here, along with dishes. And then our cooktop is propane powered. And that slides out there, we got a little two burner. So for building the kitchen space, coming out from the walls, I just use two by twos to frame it in. The countertop is just a project panel from Lowe's. Relatively inexpensive as far as full sheets to cover the space that were thick enough to really feel like a counter. I'm not a finished carpenter, so I don't judge too harshly. For the sink, most of the options that are available for RVs and tiny houses, there's not a lot of space to work, and we wanted like a, a full-size sink to be able to work out of. Went with one of those, but due to the amount of space that it takes up in the counter, you really lose a lot of your prep space. So to reclaim that, 
made this board here that magnets to the side of the fridge and drops in so you can kind of reclaim some of that counter space. And there's also a flip up countertop that's attached to the door so when that's closed you've got kind of 180 degrees of counter which has been really nice. For the fridge, there's a lot of 12 volt options out there, but the energy draw on those can be relatively high compared to just your standard home refrigerator. This smaller one, I believe, is 120 watts when the compressor's on. Continuous power pull, which is pretty low from what I could find, so we just went with that. And it had the separated fridge freezer, which is another thing that we really wanted for having it really feel like home. For heating, we've got the mini split that heats and cools, and then we've got a diesel air heater in the back by the bed in case it gets really cold. Throughout the floor, I ran some half inch pecs for diesel powered radiant heat floors. So far, it's gotten down into the 30s, and that's all I've had to use, and it's 70 degrees, 72 degrees interior temperature. Freshwater system, I've got a total of 80 gallon fresh water, and then we got a 40 gallon gray. We've just got a standard Dometic toilet that feeds to a 40 gallon black tank that's in between the frame rails. We have to go to a dump station, I'd say once every three weeks. For me, that was more convenient than having to deal with it every couple of days with a composting toilet or that style. For the shower, we've got a uh, tankless water heater, propane powered, and that uses very little propane to heat the water. I'd say once, once a month, we have to trade out a 20 gallon tank the cooktop and the shower both requiring a 20 gallon tank every month or so is, was a pretty good option for us. The space in the footprint is the only thing that I was kind of concerned about. Looking back it's definitely worth it to do a shower, even a small one. Like this pan is 24 by 36 I believe and that seems to be about the minimum of what I would do. Alright let's head down the hall I'll show you the bedroom. I work nights, I'm a travel nurse, so we wanted to be able to separate kind of the living space from the sleeping area, so we put a pocket door in here, so my girlfriend can do stuff in the front while I'm sleeping if she wants to. As you move into the bedroom, we've got a monitor for the security cameras. If we have to park anywhere kind of sketchy, it's nice to just have eyes on the outside since we went without windows for the build. Mini split here, blowing directly onto the bed space, so the AC works great. The two cabinets here are just clothing storage. Yeah, I feel like I have uh, plenty of storage, but my wardrobe is fairly limited. My girlfriend has a, her car is full of clothes. All of our controls here for everything. We've got the fairy lights on the ceiling that took forever. Totally worth it though. We wanted the bed area to be multifunctional, so it's not like just a bed or it doesn't have to flip down out of the wall. We built a slat style, so the bottom just slides out and the back cushion folds down, and then you've got a pretty large sleeping area. I think it works out to be about a queen for the width, and I'm 6'2", and it seems to be plenty of space for me. The bed makes for a pretty comfy couch. If you're gonna do this style, I would recommend accommodating for this angle of the back. I wasn't thinking about that when I built this one, but having a straight back is very uncomfortable. So we end up just kind of kicking the cushion out, but I've seen other designs that have a four or five inch kick out and that seems to be plenty. I really like the drop gate rear. So having the drop gate was really convenient for the build and for using as a porch. It doubles your living area, really. This is a system to stabilize and level the rig. If you've never lived in a trailer van, anything like that, it's a, kind of a big deal being able to find somewhere flat to park because your whole house will be at a big angle. Like you, you don't notice it as much from outside, but when you're in the space trying to just do your day to day, having a big slant makes a big difference. So I wanted a way to be able to effectively level the whole space. In, in the floor there, that's the locking block for the driver's side drop leg. We've got a valve body for the hydraulic control. 
The back two legs are the only hydraulic components in the system right now, so you got two levers. And it's pull to push them down and push to bring them up. And you can pick up the whole trailer, pretty much. We got a flat coming through Missouri and just put the drop leg on that side down and pick that whole side of the trailer up and spun the tire off with the impact gun. And we were on the road again in two minutes. It was really convenient. I didn't think about that aspect, but it was, it was great to have. And hydraulics are just cool. I wanted a reason to build it in, and that was what I landed on, so. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.